Most people who drive a car have only a basic understanding of their vehicle. Some car owners will get under the bonnet to tune a vehicle. Very few would have the knowledge to maintain or improve a high performance vehicle like a racing car. Likewise, many people who use computers only know how to use the software on their PC and others know enough to make their machine work faster and better. Some who work in software design and computer programming are like the people who work on an F1 car. They are the people who dream up and create the next big computer game, the one that everyone wants. And just as someone without an understanding of mechanics would have no chance of creating a high performance car, it's also very unlikely that someone without an understanding of the fundamentals of computing could create the next amazing game. Here at Sony Computer Entertainment's London studio, we'll find out why. Computer game programming is full of mathematical techniques, such as effects of translation, rotation, symmetry, motion, dynamics, elasticity, coordinate geometry, vectors, angles and bearings. The message is quite simple. If you want a future in computer game programming, you'll need a sound basis to work from. But what do I know? It's the people who work in that field that can tell you best. I was lucky enough to get into games programming early on before it became so important to have a mathematical background. So I taught myself to program and wrote a simple game demo which I sent off to lots of companies and that got me my first job. So for me just a passion for games and determination was enough to get into the industry but that wouldn't be enough anymore. If you look at any recent game programming job advert it's bound to specify that you need a strong mathematics ability. You need fundamentally uh, uh, maths to do any kind of graphics, any AI, any physics. Um, even networking nowadays needs, needs maths. It's very difficult to think of any game that doesn't use mathematics to some degree. For example, in SingStar, we use mathematics to analyse the player's voice, find the notes that they're singing, so we can give them an appropriate score at the end of their performance. So mathematics is fundamental to the way the game works. For instance, in Trials of Topop, a ball rolls down a maze, and what we have to do is stop the ball from falling through the maze. So every frame, we test the ball, which is a sphere, against the floor, which is a plane and then we make sure that those two aren't colliding through maths. And I started to learn mathematics the hard way by learning to solve specific problems whenever I met them. But that only gets you so far. It's like travelling to another country with just a phrase book. You can get by by just looking up the phrases that you need. But think how much more enjoyable your trip would be if you were able to speak the local language fluently. And that's why a few years ago, I decided to study for an Open University Mathematics degree in my spare time because learning the language and fundamentals of mathematics helps me to tackle a much broader range of problems that we face when making games. So the opportunities are there and the challenge continues for the next innovation. Final year students at the University of Leeds use their understandings of fundamentals to work on projects that may just give them that important in to the competitive world of computer games. This piece of coursework includes using 28 high resolution screens to make up one display screen. The roller coaster ride is a real experience. The undergraduate who created this should go a long way and that's because he put the effort into grasping the fundamentals. And what does a long way mean? Fred Gill works for Swordfish, which is one of four Sierra Entertainment internal studios. Sierra Entertainment is a division of Avendi Games. Games like World in Conflict use breathtaking graphics to push the boundaries of what's been experienced before. There's absolutely no way I'd have got so far in the games industry without good mathematics behind me. Everything we do in games uh, involves mathematics from 2D manipulations through to 3D operations.
In welding conflict, we use a broad spectrum of mathematics from vectors for storing positions, matrices for manipulation and movement, splines to make sure that the movement is smooth and looks natural, and quaternions for optimized storage. Without maths, you'll struggle in the games industry. In fact, I'd say it'd be very hard to get into the games industry. And, and something else to remember is that it's a lot harder to learn these things later in life. Um, so I'd advise doing it earlier rather than later. It's clear that games programming uses complex maths, but if you put in the work, then you will understand it. And then you'll be able to work in the same field, if that's what you want. And it's going to be much easier to learn the maths now than to have to go back to study later. We're continually evolving the way we use maths in computer games. Um, Quaternions are a fairly recent adoption by us. Um, and going forwards, we, we continue to borrow from mainstream maths. We're always looking for ways to adopt new tech kind of new technologies, and maths is a technology that we use to make our games look better or feel better. Uh, for example, um, geometric algebra is, a, is something that's really kind of hot now, and in a few years' time I can see lots of developers using that for developing their games. Thank <laughs> you.